Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and this is by request. I'm not really researching anything these days. I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around some current findings and uh, the implications, but I thought I would make this video here today, and I know a lot of you have heard of Gunang Padang, and that is how I'll pronounce it this time around. <laughs> but this is a fascinating site in Indonesia, and we are going to go down and take a look. And I first heard about this three years ago, and I've had a lot of questions, so I thought this would be a good time to talk about this. But how old is this, and what is this site all about? Well, we're going to answer a few of those questions today. Now, this is all that is visible from overhead, so you'd never realize that there is something really fascinating down here. If we do a little 3D view of it here, you can tell there is a mound here. And what does this look like if you stripped all the vegetation and growth away? Well, I think it would just be pretty fascinating. And what is underneath here is the big question. When I first heard about this site, and they were saying it was over 20,000 years old. I thought, whoa, whoa, you know, you, you just cannot say that. And then I heard uh, Graham Hancock talk about Danny Hillman, not of a Jaja, and he seemed like a very upfront very respectable person. So uh, this place has always fascinated me and there seemed to be some controversy about the government and letting work go on here. <clears throat> but that that was a while ago and uh, I'm just going to share some videos and give you a real good look at this place and a few theories and I'm going to read a little. But uh, first, why don't we just get up to this site now, I found this channel, and I thought this was pretty cool. It's called Estrella Owners Indonesia, and they take uh, motorcycle trips. And these guys, they made a video going up to Gunang Penang, so I am going to share their video to get us up to the mountaintop. And here it is. And let's go. Pagi ini kita akan melakukan perjalanan riding santai ke Cianjur. Mudah-mudahan cuaca akan baik terus dan kita selamat dalam perjalanan sampai ke rumah lagi. Now here is ancientcode.com and their story on Gunang Padang. And is this a man-made pyramid all the way up or all the way to the bottom? Is this a terraced natural hill that they worked some structures in at the top? Well, I think those are questions that need to be answered. But uh, 
there are theories, and let's just read a little here. It says, the first archaeological survey of Gunung Padang appears in a report the Department of Antiquities for Holland's Colonial Office in 1914. Thirty-three, later, thirty-three years later, a Canberra team from the Australian National University Center for Archaeological Research determined that Gunung Padang was far older than previously imagined. It says, not until February 2012, however, was a state-sponsored evaluation of the site carried out when thorough radiocarbon testing revealed it was built and first occupied about 4,800 years ago. As the researchers were carrying out their investigations, they noticed traces on Mount Padang's surface of underground structures. Going on here, it says the president of Indonesia himself, and I'm not even going to attempt that name, lavished the archaeologists with costly GSSI and multi-channel Super Sting RA ground penetrating radar units plus GEM Ovenhauser Geo magnetometers, whatever those are. These state-of-the-art instruments readily found and accurately confirmed the existence of large and small chambers, walls, gates, staircases buried deep beneath the often visited open-air ruins. And that must be just on top. It says the Jakarta Post announced on November 5th that a recent analysis of the carbon dating by the Miami-based Beta Analytic Lab has apparently validated findings by a government-sanctioned team that a man-made structure lies buried under Mount Padang in West Java. The lab used samples of sand, soil, and charcoal found at a depth of between 3 and 12 meters beneath the mountain surface. So that gives you a little idea of the testing that was done here. It says, based on geoelectric, georadar, and geomagnetic surveys, a large chamber is buried at least up to 15 meters from the surface. Carbon dating tests result from the Miami lab show that the structure could date back to 14,000 BC or beyond. The significance of this discovery cannot be overstated because it crosses the Ice Age event horizon. And it says, at 7,000 or more years older than the Stonehenge, the megaliths of Gobekli Tepe, the likely deeply buried megaliths of Gunung Padang mean that the timeline of history taught in our schools and university for the best part of the last hundred years can no longer stand. It is beginning to look as though civilization, as I argued in my controversial 1995 bestseller, Fingerprints of the Gods, is indeed much older and much more mysterious than we thought. And that is from Graham Hancock, and he dedicates a good chunk of his book uh, many pages to Ganong Padang and uh, the research of Danny Hillman, Nada Bujaja, and I thoroughly recommend Magicians of the Gods and Fingerprints of the Gods for you people that are just getting interested or already interested in ancient history and have not read those books. I can't state that strongly enough. Now, archaeoastronomy at this place. There is a little bit in the last part of this article, and I will leave this link below if you want to read and there are theories on certain alignments and I notice one of them is the Cygnus star Deneb and that is also seems to be tracked at Gobekli Tepe and at the very ancient Karahunj in Armenia. I just wanted to mention that. Now in Ancient Code they have a video attached so we'll take a peek at just a little bit of this and I will leave a link below to this full video. At the top of the mountain at the peak of the Munupada, there is something like a man-made and we try to discover it and we try to research it and we found that it's really really man-made about the stone of that uh, building I said it it's, it's not a mountain because it is uh, some kind of a man-made I said it there is uh, a human that can make something like this it is very very needs uh, advanced technology and I believe that a long, long time ago, the people knew the advanced technology, how to mix the metal and the stone, how to make some extra hot heat. We had a sample and we tried to uh, analyze 
And when we analyzed, we found that 23,000 years old before Christ. It looks to me like this material we see here is natural. It's, a, it's formed by volcanoes, and it's not the only site in the world where you get this sort of thing. The humans at some point in history have found this material and have constructed something here. That's about as much as we know right now. We, uh, we need to find out when and why they built this, what the purpose of this building is. The whole purpose while we're interested in this is to see whether there is something in Indonesia that is older than the Ice Age, that's something that's Ice Age period. This might fit the bill. That would support our theory, which is that uh, Indonesia was the seat of an Ice Age civilization. Now here is a look on Google Earth and it's really nice when you can just go look around a place on the other side of the world here. But this is the top of the pyramid or the man-made hill that was reworked. And you, here you see those columns. And to me, maybe this is my just my impression. It seems that there was a very ancient sacred pyramid or structure built into this hillside here. And I think a lot of this is man-made. And when you just have thousands and thousands and thousands of years, the sedimentation comes along, trees start growing, and you just can't picture what it originally was. But if you cleared everything away, I think you'd see a massive man-made structure here. And from around the world, from these pyramids, and then cultures come along, it seems that the rule was a long, long time ago, if your culture put their workings on top of an ancient structure, then the structure would in fact like become your pyramid. So what I think happened is a civilization came along here just thousands of years ago, not way back into the Ice Age time, but you know, a few thousand years ago, and they wanted to make this structure their pyramid, and they attempted with these columnar blocks here to cover the pyramid totally, and with blocks like this, it wouldn't have been a very easy job. But I think an attempt was made to cover the original pyramid in these blocks, maybe a thousand or two years ago. That's just an initial impression. And over time, probably some earthquakes, uh, people living in the area taking these away for maybe building purposes. But to me, it just looks like maybe a couple thousand years ago, a culture wanted to cover the original structure and maybe it was already sedimentation and they had to work a little but an attempt was made to totally cover it in these blocks that's just what it looks to me now this is i can studio live and they also made a video made shareable at gunang panang and i'm going to share a bit of their video and i will leave links for all these channels and all these videos below with the full length version of them if i just use a snippet of them but check out their channel they have 15,000 subs, but I appreciate them making this video shareable. And here is a bit from that video right now.
This video is starting to get a little lengthy, so I think I am just going to stop it here. But uh, thanks to those channels who made their videos shareable, and I thought they were pretty cool. This is the top of the structure up here, whatever it is. And uh, pyramids around the world, Mayan pyramids, seen some Egyptian pyramids, and some other sites around the world. Pyramids are built on top of pyramids. I think they say the one at Chichen Itza. There is actually an old pyramid, a pyramid on top of that. And then the current one we see today seems cultures were putting their mark on top of very, very ancient structures. And if this goes back 14,000, 20,000 years, and we just kind of say those numbers without really wrapping our heads around the implications, but I think Gunang Penang is one of the most fascinating sites, and this could really rewrite history. People say Gobekli Tepe rewrote history. Well, this goes, this could possibly go back maybe 8,000 years earlier than Gobekli Tepe. But this is a look at the top of Gunang Penang here. And one other channel that made a video on this place recently was the Pukaje guys. And I'm going to leave a link to that video too, because they have become one of my favorite channels. And a lot of questions I had, they really answered in that video. So check that one out too. But this is a very mysterious site. Hopefully proper archaeological work can go on here. Seems there is some people like Danny Hillman Nato Ajaja, who is pretty upfront. Very knowledgeable person is doing work here, and that makes me feel a little bit more at ease. Hopefully the government will stay out of it. The history of humanity is nobody's business, but everybody's. Now let's have the Estrella motorcycle guys take us down the hill. And I hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day. Uh -huh.